As someone who's done my fair share of no sharpen runs in Monster Hunter games, that got me thinking. What if you could keep your sharpness meter completely intact through an entire game? I decided to put this to the test and find out if it's even possible. I booted up Rise and started at the beginning, but now you're probably wondering, how am I gonna get through the first part of the game without losing sharpness? <laughs> you can't use protective polish until later on, and using obscure ways to deal damage like bombs and blast toads would be ridiculous. And using bows and bow guns would just kill the point of the challenge entirely. Thankfully, there was a way. But it only involves one weapon type. The sword and shield. See, there's a special property it has. If you only use shield attacks, you don't lose sharpness at all. But it doesn't come without its drawbacks. You can still lose sharpness with every attack involving the sword. Which we don't want, because if I lose sharpness even once in a given quest, I have to abandon and restart it. So at the beginning, I fought a great Azuchi by bashing its head over and over until it was dispatched, which was way easier than I thought. Though during the fight, I had to be careful not to accidentally use any sword attacks. I chose the easiest of the two star quests, like the one involving the rap shells, since basically it meant I had no risk of losing sharpness. But when I got to the small baggy quest to get it done quickly, I overestimated my ability to avoid accidents. <gasps> Are you... Are you joking me right now? Yep, had to restart. I got back and beat the quest since I actually had to be careful this time. But this meant I had a big problem. See, with all the ways to draw a sword and shield, including on paper, wait, no, that's not correct. Quick blocking is the safest way. But every time you draw the weapon this way, especially really fast, you run the risk of doing the quick slash when blocking, which is exactly what happened in that small baggy quest. Because of this, I needed to be extra careful when making progress. I beat the great baggy just fine and same went with the urgent quest. But then, then this happened. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. That was way too close. I beat the Agnesom with my sharpness still intact, but I had to be even more careful not to mess up in the next hunts. But as I was going through some of the key quests, I lost sharpness again. <gasps> Why? <sighs> Upon restarting, I did the subquest properly this time and went to beat the Kulu Yaku. But then came the Rampage tutorial. Now, normally this wouldn't be a bad thing since most of the time I'd be using turrets. But once the counter signal goes off, I have to actually fight to repel the monsters. If I lost sharpness at any point during this quest, I would have to go through this tutorial all over again. But since I was careful, I managed to get through with no damage to my sharpness. The rest of the village quests were a clean sweep since I was bashing monsters left and right, especially when I upgraded my sword. But it got to a point where I was bored of the same combo and tried to spice things up when I got to Berioth. This was a mistake. Oh! What was I thinking? I knew that Falling Shadow uses a sword to attack. Did I think I would just simply close the gap to get to him faster? Anyway, after that little mishap, I redid the quest to beat Berioth and was patient this time. Then, after bashing a squirrely snake around, it was on to the Magnamalo fight. As per usual, it didn't take long to beat and the challenge was done. Right? Well, not exactly. Because if I'm being honest, the village was a pushover in this challenge. That, and it wouldn't be exciting for me to just end the video right here and be done with it. So this means it was on to high rank, which means finishing off the village quests. With everything done, it was time for the quest that was the gateway to high rank, which also happens to be a rampage. But unlike the tutorial, the risk of losing sharpness is much higher. If I lost sharpness here, I would have to redo this rampage, which I didn't want to do. Rampages suck. I managed to get through the first two phases, but as soon as the Apex Arzeros came out, I was not in for a good time. The fight was so scuffed because his torso being high off the ground made it hard to hit any weak points. He also kept attacking the gate, which for once worried me that I'd fail the quest. Not to mentioned the amount of times he knocked me around, stunned me, and even fainted me. I really didn't want to lose sharpness at this point, so I took extra precaution. But of course he kept on attacking the gate, which I'm sure was close to breaking. I kept bashing him until finally... Lynch. Yes! Oh my gosh. That was way too close. <laughs> Once I got to high rank and upgraded my gear, I went to complete a capture quest to unlock a switch skill that would come in handy, Metsu Shuryogeki, an attack that uses a shield, which means we have another move that doesn't use sharpness, which is great because I was getting tired of using the same hard basher combo a million times. But because of the move's ability to do mounting damage, it leaves monsters open for wyvern riding, which is against the rules. Thank goodness for the option to disable it. I did some key quests to make progress, and while I was at it, I crafted a fortitude deco. You know, so I can get stat boosts when I die. Now for this next part, I thought it would be a good idea to hunt Kezu since bashing his head would be easy, but because I was being a little too careful, this happened. Oh, 
I could have sworn that I was going for a shield bash, but because I moved too much in hopes that I would get a well-timed hit, I accidentally didn't move forward while attacking. I didn't bother hunting Kazu again, so instead I fought other monsters to keep going. After bashing a fish that wasn't worth my time, I made another upgrade to my sword and shield and made a hammer that I would need later. We'll get back to this, don't worry. There were a lot of monsters to get through, so instead of boring you with how the rest of the quests went, here's a montage. When I got to Narwa, I figured she would be easy, so I created a poll to see whether you guys wanted me to beat normal Narwa or all mother Narwa before master rank. But before you see the results, here's how the fight went. Ah, these thunder rings. Oh no. This fight's gonna be horrible. What? Is this fight literally going to be the bane of my existence now? Ah, oh, you can't counter that. I forgot. What? Excuse me? Oh, don't do that. Oh, every single time. If they ask me to do All Mother, that's gonna suck for me because I never thought I would be struggling with this. Narwa is a monster I normally don't struggle with. Oh, come on. I'm just trying to... Oh my gosh. I do not want to lose sharpness. If I lose sharpness, I'm gonna be salty. It's been 10 minutes and she's not even close to dead yet. Oh, Stupid rigs! Oh, come on. Ah! ah! Oh my gosh, why? Ugh! I, I really hope I don't have to do... Oh, mother! This is torture for me right now. Doing the ring thing, just like with Alatrion. Just wait for the middle one to go down and then go in. Oh! You know what? Now would be a good time to use this. Booyah, there we go. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Ooh. I just barely touched that. She's almost dead. Oh. Oh, I got her. Okay, that means I can go to Master Rank, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> as much as I was hoping to reach Master Rank after the fight, the vote said otherwise. 87% say all mother? Are you joking? <laughs> no! Well, this means I had to spend time grinding HR. But before I did that, I crafted a protective polish deco and a speed sharpened deco. If you remember when I crafted the hammer earlier, I did so because I would need it for master rank after getting protective polish. So far, every quest has been a breeze with sword and shield, and using a different weapon with protective polish would make it harder, at least in theory. This means I can't use both sword and shield and protective polish because that would be overkill. The reason I'll use hammer for master rank is because the weapon for some reason has a sharpness meter, even though it's not a bladed weapon. Anyway, I still needed a way to get HR fast to reach All Mother. Thankfully, there were plenty of ways to do that. I did some rampages to get HR so fast that I already unlocked the HR 20 urgent, but because the HR can accumulate prior to beating the urgent quest, I decided to grind more, but before that, I needed a good talisman, so I threw a bunch of materials in the melting pot and got the grind underway. I was grinding quest upon quest, but then eventually, I realized something. Wait a second, couldn't I just cheese the system a bit and take on All Mother this way? <laughs> it's gonna be 10 times harder, but honestly, I'd prefer doing this over the grind. <laughs> I was able to get past the Bushi no problem, but as soon as I got to All Mother, well, I think it's best if you see for yourself. I'm just gonna run a little bit, uh, okay. Ooh, ooh. Ah, shoot. Oh, ah! It's okay, I have Fortify. Okay, she's doing this whole thing. Ah! Are you serious? Of all the times to lose sharpness, it had to be now? Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, why? With the amount of pressure I had, I choked. Twice. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I had to look back at the footage. I accidentally, yet again, lost 
sharpness. So I took a break from the fight and finished off the melding by recycling the same Fire Lantern quest. Once I was done, I got a charm that would be game-changing for this challenge. A Weakness Exploit 2 charm. Sure, it only has a level 1 slot, but this would be enough for me to get through the rest of the game. I also got a Slugger Protective Polish charm, which would be a huge help in Master Rank. With the new charm equipped, I was ready to beat All Mother once and for all. Again? Why? Ugh. I did not think I was gonna end up you- Are you kidding me? The stupid hitbox! Okay, maybe I wasn't ready. I had failed this quest four times, all from losing sharpness. Maybe I just wasn't cut out for Super All Mother. Maybe I should just go back to grinding so I can beat it the intended way. No. I had almost beat All Mother when I lost sharpness in the previous hunt. I wasn't about to give up and settle for something I didn't want to do. I was going to beat this All Mother and move on to Master Rank. Had to counter it. Oh, I actually got through it. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Patient. Oh. oh my gosh, I almost fainted. Ugh, oh, dang it. These are the only potions I have left. If I faint, I'll only get stronger. Yeah, okay. I have the tail. I have to hit the tail. Oh, she's almost dead now. I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Oh, oh, oh hitbox, 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 hitbox. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, I thought I was able to dodge that fairly easily before. Oh, shoot. Oh, man, now we're back to this again. One faint. I would ask why this is so hard, but we already know the answer. I can't turn back now. Where are the attacks coming from? I'm dealing so much damage. She has to go down at some point. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No pressure. No pressure is allowed. Finish her, please. Wait. I have a chance. Oh. Yes! Oh my gosh. I can't believe it! I beat All Mother, and not just All Mother! I beat Super All Mother without losing sharpness! Oh! <laughs> Take that, you guys who wanted me to grind to get to this point! Oh! <laughs> with All Mother defeated, I beat Monster Hunter Rise without losing sharpness. But I didn't win the challenge yet, so it was on to Master Rank. Only then can I say I have truly conquered this challenge.